All right, in this lecture, we're going to look at the same production function, but we're actually going to ignore the fact that it exists. We understand these basic ideas of marginal returns, returns to scale, marginal product, and I'm not going to really talk about them anymore, but I'm going to use the same uh, production function with nine machines so that this, remember this uh, production function will uh, simplify to q equals 6 times the square root of l. And we're going to assume that is still what governor governs our uh, production, but we're going to not look at those details of how many workers am I hiring and where does all this come from. Instead, let's look over here at the cost structure of a business. Now, I'm just going to assume that um, we're going to have handed to us a table of different quantities of output and we're going to let some other manager handle how many workers and how many hours that will take um, but they're going to calculate for us after they figure out how many people to hire for each number of different units of output we might want to produce for an order how much total cost would be required and it's comes from the same place. Now basically, where did I get these numbers? I used the same production function, q equals 6 times the square root of l, but I solved it for l equals q squared over 36, and I used that to plug into this function. Rather than having a production function, now we have what's called a total cost function. $90 plus 100 times the number of laborers but I plugged in, um, instead of being concerned with the number of laborers, I'm concerned with the quantity. And so our total cost function is $90 plus 100 times the quantity we want squared divided by 36. Now don't worry about where that came from. We're just going to assume we start off with a blank table. But the two things that are going to be filled in t at the beginning are the number of units of output we might want and how much it will cost us. So let's assume we have that table and I'm going to switch over to Excel now so we can get it to do some calculations for us. Alright, now that we've got our total cost table, the first thing to notice if you, if you ever see a table like this is that when we're producing zero output, I'll put a Q there, when you're producing zero units of output, that total cost amount that you have there, $90, cannot be labor costs or materials costs because you're not producing anything. So you're not using materials or labor. You're not using those variable costs. So all of that $90 are fixed costs, right? And none are going to be variable costs, VC. And we don't talk about marginal costs for zero units. Uh, that doesn't make any sense. So. Uh, average total cost, same kind of thing. Um, we don't worry about that here because average in this case means per unit and you can't divide by zero units. So let's, uh, basically all we've done so far is break, in, break apart and notice that we have 90 in fixed costs, zero in variable costs. At, and those together have to add up to the total cost. Now for one unit, if that's all we wanted, our total cost would go up to $92.78. So what's the marginal cost of that one extra unit? Well, it cost us $2.78 to produce. So let me just go ahead and put that over here. Marginal cost means additional cost for that one additional unit we got. And since we're just looking at one unit, it's a little simpler calculation. Our fixed costs are always going to be 90, so let me just copy those down. Fixed costs are fixed. That's why we call them fixed. At least they're fixed in the short run. That's the amount of money for our uh, machines. But also another thing that's in there is what we call normal profit, which is basically what the entrepreneur needs to be paid in order to make it worth his while or her while to stay in this business. To get the variable cost, it's very simple. You just take the total cost, subtract off how much are fixed to get 
how much are the variable costs for things like labor and materials. So I'll just set up a formula here in Excel to do this for us. Equals, uh, in my spreadsheet, it's B14 minus 90, right? 90 is the fixed costs. And I can copy that formula down. And this will just tell us how much of our total costs are made up of the variable costs for labor and materials. Now marginal cost is how much additional cost do I have to produce each of these additional units. Now you can do this two ways. You can either calculate how much are your total costs increasing or you can calculate how much are your variable costs increasing because they're both increasing by the same amount. The only difference between the two are the fixed costs and they're not changing at all. So we can just calculate, again I'll use a formula here for simplicity, equals uh, how much are my variable costs now minus how much were my variable costs before I produced this unit. So this $8.33 tells us that that second unit increased the amount of our bills, our costs, by 833 and so that's how much that second unit will cost us to produce by itself. Now our average total cost gives us an average figure per unit how much are all of our bills, how much are all of our costs per unit. So we can't do that for no units because the word per means divide by units and you can't divide by zero here. Now so total cost divided by one gives us average total cost. I'll set up a formula but you can see that that's just going to be 9278. So equals that divided by the quantity. That tells us that per unit for the one unit all of our bills are 9278 per unit. For two units our total costs are $101, but divided over the two units we have, and that's $50 per unit, $50.56 per unit. Copy that down. What is this useful for? Well, it gives us a way of looking at how much money is going out per unit, and it gives us something to focus on about how much money needs to be coming in per unit we sell. So we keep our eye on the price that we can sell our units for and we compare it to the, so think about price as the money coming in per unit, average total cost is the total amount going out per unit, so amount of money we have to be bringing in, otherwise we're not going to be able to make a profit or pay all of our bills, pay all of our costs. Now average variable cost, we do the same thing for variable cost here, $2.78 divided over the number of units we're producing. Now let's copy that down and we can talk about what a couple of those mean. For example, um, right here, this $11.11. .11. That tells us that per unit, to, well, total it's $44.44 .44 in labor costs when we produce four units. So that's $11.11 .11 each that we're spending on labor costs. This gives us a number to focus on to make sure that at a minimum we're going to bring in enough money to pay our laborers with, our labor and materials bills. And fixed costs, same kind of idea. We're just going to take this $90 and divide it over the number of units that we're producing. So we're apportioning, we're dividing out uh, how much of these fixed costs needs to be paid with each of the units that we're going to go and try to sell. So equals, and this is 90, always divided by how many units. That's going to change. So if we're only selling one unit, that one unit better be bringing in money to pay all of those fixed costs with. But as we produce more units, we can divide that $90 over more units, spread it out over more units, and see what happens. Now, so here, if we just look at nine units, for example, $315 are all of our bills. 90 of that is for our rent uh, and normal profit returns to the entrepreneur. $255 are for things like labor and materials. 
marginal cost forty seven dollars and twenty two cents that's how much that ninth unit costs us to produce by itself so when we've already made eight and we want to make the ninth forty seven dollars and twenty two cents is how much it costs to make that unit and thirty five on average per unit for our total costs when we're making nine units twenty five dollars per unit for our labor costs and ten dollars per unit for our fixed costs when we're making nine units now let me graph these and we can look at them real quickly so I've graphed the marginal cost average variable cost and average total cost and these don't look typical and the reason they don't is because of this production function we started off with in the first lecture but usually these are the three things we'll graph average variable average total and marginal cost now we're going to do this all again using an, another table and we'll graph them and then we'll see what we can use these things for.